Hi, welcome to our webinar, Making Marketing a Value Center. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to demonstrate ROI in your work and really position yourself within the organization as a value center, not just a cost center. There is a chat available on the side. So if you have questions or comments, please feel free to drop them in there and we will be happy to have you answer those questions while we're going along. So I am Sally Mildren. I am the CEO and founder of Boss Lady Consulting and Clarity PX. So what's the difference? Boss Lady Consulting serves businesses outside of healthcare, purposeful businesses, nonprofits, B Corps, that kind of organization looking to make a difference. And Clarity PX serves healthcare, specifically rural healthcare, smaller regional health systems, federally qualified health systems, critical access, and others. So we're excited to be here. And I want to just acknowledge after more than 20 years in your boots on the ground, I know that marketing is a constantly changing field. And now more than ever with generative AI, with technology shifts, with consumer changes, that challenge is even greater than it's ever been. And so we're going to talk today about how do you demonstrate the impact of your work inside your organization and outside your organization. We'll be really excited to dive in. And as I mentioned, if you've just joined us, there's a chat feature. So please feel free to add in your comments, introduce yourself, tell us where you're joining us from. We'd love to hear from you. So the first thing that I want to start off with is that I think you're amazing and you are doing extraordinary work. Marketing and communications is not for the faint of heart. And it's not for the people who are easily shied off by struggle or challenge or opportunity. And so we're glad that you're here and we're excited to help have this conversation. So today we're going to run down, kind of set the stage with some headlines and key factors that are setting up for 2024. We're going to talk about how to align your work to business imperatives, how to prioritize that work within marketing, how to talk about it and report your impact. I'll show you a couple easy sample dashboards, and then we have an exciting resource that we want to just make you avail aware of at the end. So. Here we go, we'll dive right in. So a few headlines. In you know, There is 50% of the adults in the United States feel that generative AI and artificial intelligence pose a risk to society. And 60% of those are gonna use it and learn to love it in 2024. That's the projection. Artificial intelligence is ranges anywhere from totally cool to totally spooky when you if you've seen the ads for the new pixel 8 and you've taken pictures and they're like oh find the best shot and they'll switch the heads out a little bit creepy but super cool ai is here to stay and it's it behooves us all in marketing to learn a little bit how it can support us and make us better but it's not going to replace you i can guarantee that so make sure for your um, 2024 strategies that you are considering how can AI boost or expand or level up our work and help me be even a better marketer. We're planning on a topic on artificial intelligence and how it might help with community health needs assessments for rural health. So if you're interested in that, put, put a note in the chat and we'll be sure to make sure you're invited. We've been looking at strategic work and AI and community health needs assessments and how to align those things. So it's pretty cool what we've been finding. Another stat for 2024 is that 75% of the buyer teams in B2B work, so our agency to other organizations across businesses are going to be in the 25 to 44 year old age range. So 
what is important to that specific key audience if you're working to reach those folks is really the more personal one-on-one -on -one individualized meetings with product experts. That's the thing that's going to help sway them. So for my agency, for example, that stat for 2024 tells me I need to do things a little bit differently than I have in the past. 81% of U.S. adults don't trust social media. And if you're on the list, you know, there's a lot of times I'm like, oof, I'm a marketing agency. We're involved in hundreds of social media accounts. But the, the rise of fake news and now even, you know, Tom Hanks had an ad set up of him, his face, his voice that he never was part of. It was a fake ad. And so people distrust social media more and more. Does it mean you need to leave there? No. I invite you to stay and be a voice of truth, but recognizing that social media is not such a trusted source as it maybe once was, there is that now this resurgence and rebound of trust into traditional news sources and media outlets. The New York Times, BBC, and others are really earning a kind of a rebound of trust. And in a study I saw, the number one thing people trust was friends. Number two was trusted media news sources. So it's an interesting insight just to keep in mind to make sure that you have an earned media or that you're doing press releases still, that you have an element of reputation and public relations in your marketing and communications mix. And another stat I wanted to share is that com companies that consumers trust or think are a trustworthy brand have 300% more likely, 3x more likely to get forgiveness if you have a problem with your service or your product. And the other thing that's interesting is that further 72% of those businesses that already trust a brand will trust your subsidiaries, your partners, your affiliate brands as well. So there's an earned trust factor that's shared among your partners. So it's important to know that for organizations that maybe have a whole house of brands, if they really trust your main organization, you are going to earn the trust of, on your affiliate and partner brands as well, which is terrific news because our nation is in a little bit of a trust crisis. So, And then a couple more stats I want to hit before we launch into our program. 60% of marketing leaders report that the focus on short-term pressures, short-term stuff, oh, do this now, keeps them from looking at long-term strategy. And these are CMOs and marketing leaders being interviewed for 2024 strategies. So it's right off the press. Um, and it's true, especially post pandemic, there has been this press to get quick money in the door, quick wins. And that is okay, you have to do that. But at the cost of long-term strategy, that begins to take a toll on your brand strength your brand recall, and the ability of you to pull on that loyalty. So it's important to learn to strike a balance between the short term and the long term. And then this last step might seem a little counterintuitive because we're talking about creating value and how to talk about what you do. But this step, I think, is really important to hone in to, to prove that it's now so important to align to business initiatives. So 55% of C-suite and executive leaders feel like marketing has an inflated view of their importance on cross-functional initiatives. And I think that's a surprising stat to me. So in this study from, from Gartner looking at 2024 strategies and where marketing leaders really need to rise up this stat came out of. And I think it's important to recognize that you need to be able to demonstrate how you are impacting cross-functional initiatives and the alignment of your marketing strategies across the organization has never been more important. I've seen some studies that indicate like 60, 70% 
of marketing and customer experience leaders can't demonstrate ROI, they don't know how. And I've seen uh, further other studies that indicate that there will be a cut of budgets as a result of that inability. So not trying to be a fear monger, but just trying to underscore that the setting is ripe for you to demonstrate marketing is having impact on this organization. Here's how we are not just a cost center, that's a necessary evil. We are producing results and driving the bottom line for this organization. So we're going to jump right in here. So your marketing strategy, when you are setting your goals, your KPIs, what are your measurements and tactics, they need to be regularly reviewed against the new realities of business. This is a, this is, you know, sounds like Captain Obvious, and maybe it is, hopefully it is. But you have to make sure that your marketing strategy is aligned to the organizational mission and vision first. Duh. But sometimes we get so in an echo chamber and get told, do this, do this, do this, that we just get going on these things and forget to take a stop and look at, oh, does this even align with our mission and vision? Or am I just taking orders and running because the last one came up? So it's important that you take time out. I know one of our clients, a uh, uh, smaller critical access hospital, they have right on each of the goals for marketing, which core value it relates to. And I think that's essential to keep yourself grounded in the mission, the values, the, the purpose of who you are and who you're supposed to be in the organization. And you want to look, has it been reviewed to current economic, geographic, or industry changes? If you're a smaller healthcare entity and you've been watching the headlines, CVS just filed for bankruptcy. What? Walgreens is, setting, is shutting down a bunch of their pharmacies. Well, what is that going to do to access to flu shots, to immunizations, to, in some cases, the rapid care things that were right within their, I think it's Rite Aid that filed, I apologize, Rite Aid filed for bankruptcy. But it's interesting to see that even among these small kind of health um, subsidiaries within our communities, what is that going to do then to the access for patients in your community? You've got to pay attention to what's going on in the industry in the economics and in the geographic area. If you know that a big employer in your area is being slated to shut down and now these people all need somewhere else to work, maybe that's a place you can go and leverage, encourage your HR, send letters to those people and say, we've got openings. It's just something to pay attention to. You have to decide, do your strategies align to your organization's most important business objectives? Do you know what those are and how do they align? And then you're, are you measuring your impact and results? A lot of folks that we work with just stay busy and they don't take time to figure out if it worked. And so you might be recreating the same thing that wasn't effective before. You're not going to get something effective if you don't stop and make sure. And if you are measuring, make sure that the measures you're reading matter. We'll go into that in a little bit. Sometimes we get kind of stuck in a groove and we're like, oh, here's how many impressions came. Impressions mean nothing to a CEO, but a CEO is looking for swagger power. How did our brand get elevated? How did, how did more people know about us? What impact? What stories were told? What proof that it made a difference is there? And then how are you sharing your impact and work within the organization? That's a big thing. Sometimes we, we assume people know what we do, but I can't tell you how many organizations I've been in where people are like, this is, marketing is the bow maker. At one place I worked, they called us the cookies and milk crew. No, we have to elevate beyond that level in order to be recognized and respected in the organization. And that requires us telling the story. So how do you align your work to business imperatives? Well, first of all, 
You have to know the key priorities for your organization. And how do you know those? I would start with looking at what is my boss on the line for? What's the thumb on my boss's back? What about their boss? What is the CEO talking about in our meetings? What what are the articles that are coming up? Or has there been strategic planning and you haven't been at the table? Find out what the organizational priorities are. I can bet for most revenue growth is on there, whether that means new, new customers or patients, or it means retention of the ones you've got. A lot of organizations, marketing is being kind of pulled into some recruitment because staffing is such an issue. And so find out what are the number one things or top three in the organization by asking. I'll tell you what, people will be impressed. And that takes me to the second part where there's key stakeholders. You've got to create a partnership with revenue managers, finance officers, your CFO, whoever it is that is doing the numbers in your organization, create a relationship with them. Offer to buy them a coffee, set a one-on-one and find out what are the most important things in your organization. We've had some clients who were going along and doing great work, but discovered later after after asking questions, that wasn't the highest priority work. We've made a shift. Okay, now we're going to work on the highest priorities. So if you can't tell me what the lifetime value or the economic value of a patient or a customer in your business is, then you need to go find out. What what is the value of this human in your organization? When I was a vice president at a Fortune 50 health insurance company, I had to go find out from the CFO and the revenue managers and data people, what is the value of one member each month in our organization? Okay, I got a number of what that means. What is the average length of retention for them? Okay, got that number. So then I could calculate if we in marketing helped retain one member, it would be worth this much money. And it, so we were able to then tie a number to our work and make sure that the work we were doing was driving revenue, positive influence for the organization. Nobody else in the organization was going to calculate that for me. Oh, gosh, Sally, all these things you guys did, outreach, the mailers, the whatever, brought in this many people. Nope. We had to know what we were looking for and get the numbers and calculate it for them and say, you know what? We improved our retention of this body of members from 40% to 80%. That is the equivalent of this many million dollars to the organization. Oh, hello, marketing I see you. That's what they're looking for. So no, make sure you know some figures around your business, whether it's a consumer product good, how much is the profit on every unit sold? Okay, then calculate that. And if you know this campaign resulted in 100 units sold, you can say you added this much money to the bottom line of the organization. Excuse me. Sick for a little bit. So innovation, discover, think about ways of how your work might support other work within the organization. I gave the example of the community health needs assessment. It's a a report that's done every three years among, you know, nonprofit and smaller health organizations. It influences funding and in some cases certifications that they have. So it's an important thing. But in no organization I have worked in, in 20 years, has that been aligned with marketing? Never. It makes no sense to me. Because marketing is out doing a lot of stuff that they could pull in some of those initiatives and then end up helping rise the tide for us and for them. And it makes no sense to me. It's something that we are passionate about trying to help our clients align those things a little better because 
what happens is the community health assessment gets done, we report on it, and then three years later when we have to report on it again, we're scrambling going, oh my gosh, what did we do? This is, some, this is just one simple example of how you could say, gosh, we're doing all of this outreach in the community for marketing and communications. Maybe we should have them focused on healthy eating or food deserts or you know, decreasing blood pressure or whatever. Find something from your community health assessment and make that the topic of emphasis in some of your outreach. Then we're doing two things at once. The collaboration we've spoke of, but it is important to get collaboration across, not just up, but across the organization. I could tell you in some cases when I had found out, okay, if we do this thing, then these patients are coming to us. One example, we, we created a kids club for a lead magnet for, for marketing so that we could grow our email list and have access to moms and children. And we created this thing. And then we discovered over in case management, they needed to be educating our communities on the importance of childhood checkups and immunizations and all of this. Guess what? We collaborated with case management. They wrote all the content for our kids club. And we ended up using our kids club as a fun way to collect leads and get access to people we created lots of helpful, healthy recipes and fun games and activities for kids to do to promote activity and combat childhood obesity. But then we were also able to get those messages in there for this other initiative that had nothing to do with us. But it created this collaboration across the organization, which resulted in more buy-in and more support from other vice presidents, other directors, other leaders in the organization. And that's really what the synergy speaks to here. And then the last thing is that, you know, all three of these bottom line, collaboration, interactive, and synergy, is really about knowing outside of your office walls, what else is going on in the organization? How can we work together to rise the tide and float all the boats. And I'll remind you that if you have questions or thoughts, feel free to drop it in the chat. So how then, once you've identified what your priorities, what are the important things, how do you prioritize your marketing work? This is probably one of the most challenging things. And I would say that, you know, I was um, on a board with a national marketing agency the other day and um, an organization with hundreds of members. And they were talking about strategic planning and how really, you know, at the strategic, top strategic levels, you really don't want more than about five goals. You can't effectively accomplish 29 things. Now, under that, you may have 15 tactics or sub goals, whatever. But especially if you're a one or two person team, you're really small, whatever, you have to really prioritize your marketing work. And learning that art is essential to ensuring that you deliver strong results and impact for the organization. You'd rather have 100% done on one or two things than 10% done on 10 things. It's really important for you to identify going back to what are the main things and what are the number one things that the CEO and the COO are stressed about? Okay, how can we make those our priority and deliver strong impact there? So it also is important to craft your goals. And at the time you're crafting your goals, make sure you know how you're going to measure it. It has to have meaningful metrics that set you up for success. I was on a call yesterday with leaders from other hospitals and they were saying, our strategic plan is be the employer of choice in our community. I said, well, how do you measure that? He's like, I have no idea. So don't do that to yourself. Don't create these lofty sounding, amazing goals that aren't 
tangible. If you're going to start there, then you have to say, and how will this be measured? In what time frame? By what metrics? Okay, we're going to move from a three star on glass door to a four star on glass door by 12, by 12 months from now. Make it very specific so you can measure whether what you're doing is working or not. <clears throat> My phone's kind of blowing up. Um, prioritizing high value work. So you, when you know how to evaluate your work projects against the most important things, that is the most invaluable truth right there. And that is where you're going to truly demonstrate strong value to the organization. So I'll talk through a few examples here. You know, at one case um, with a client we're working with, they were, you know, doing really great work and creative work and had it all planned out. But when they dove in on what the most important things were, realized, oh, wait a minute, not this product line. This one is the one that really drives money for our organization. So the strategy has shifted to make sure that the paid marketing budget, that the bolus of emphasis and resources, which includes your time, are being spent on this one that drives the most money for the organization. It's important to know that because staying busy isn't the job, isn't the goal. The goal is not just better. The goal is to be differentiated and to really have impact. So it's never a question on whether you're working hard or not. It's a question on whether you're working hard on the right things. And sometimes all these minutia get put on our plate. Oh, we need a new Facebook group for this little sub people in the organization that isn't even rolling up to the main Facebook page of the organization. Those kinds of things end up pulling our time away from this is the revenue generating activity that our organization needs to grow in by 23% per the strategic plan. So make sure that you know that. Um, you know, I gave the example, the kids club, where we did it for a marketing reason. We ended up, we were way behind on our certification measures in that organization that determined how much money we got. It was essential that we improved it. So that kids club, being able to fold in some of those Heatish, heatish measures and some of the health goals that um, the organization had and hadn't moved the needle on, vital. That was became a vital priority for us. It didn't upend everything else, but it was a vital priority to attach those two together. And one of the things that, um, another example that we did, um, we were doing a lot of outreach events for one smaller organization and we were going to kind of referral sources and you know trying to just see what we could do and you know out in the community just trying to be present and honestly the person i worked with who ended up leaving and i replaced her in her role she was at events probably four or five days a week and but there was no intention set to those and when we stopped and made it about, okay, we aren't getting enough referrals into the outpatient clinic. We aren't getting the right referrals. 85% of the referrals that were coming in at that time were incorrect. So we adjusted our work, helped create better messaging, helped create referral guidelines for physicians, helped create simpler messaging for the general public. And we launched a brand campaign that was much simpler, easier to catch and know what we serve. And we launched at the same time a provider outreach strategy that was exactly the technical things that physicians needed. So now we were only out in the community maybe once or twice a week, but every single one exactly drove the message and the growth the organization needed. So for us, in that case, we went from 85% wrong referrals to less than 30% in six months' time. That is enormous cost savings to the organization. And by the way, it drove 
more patients in the door, which meant more outpatient clinic visits and meant more surgeries and more rehab and all of that. So it's just in a it's just another example of how you can easily shift to most important things. If you guys have any a uh, specific question, feel free to put it in the chat. So those were our examples. <clears throat> so how do you talk and report on your impact? And I think I alluded to this earlier. Don't assume that people know or understand what you do in marketing. You're the one who's neck deep in it and invested and know exactly what and why. So make sure that you are saying what you're working on. Again, we get so busy in the stuff that we forget to demonstrate our value. And so for me, you know, we're not just talking about a list of projects, but it's up to you to tell the story of how you and your team are impacting the most important things in the organization. They're not going to connect the dots. They're going to see that you're the cookies and milk crew. They're not going to see we drove 40% increase in retention of this population group in our customer base, which resulted in $4.5 million this year cost savings. That's what they need to hear from you. So make sure that you are crafting the story around the impact that you're doing. And I want to say in here that when you're measuring your impacts, if you've hired contractors or consultants or other people to work on your behalf, that counts. That's part of your leadership that is producing those results. Own those results. First, make sure they're reporting to you. And if they aren't, get on the phone and tell them, I pay you good money. Show me the money. You need to show me your impact. And then you can share that as a collective impact on your organization. You need to know your audience. Just the same way you adjust your message externally, whether it's a provider or a patient or a customer or a storefront owner or whatever, you have to do the same thing internally. Most of the time, and me especially, way too verbose for C-suite officers. They're just like, get to the point. Oh my gosh, get to the point, Sally. <laughs> they, I drive them crazy. And I practiced my whole life to be a little more succinct and much more targeted with my messages to them. They don't want the whole backstory. They want the problem, what we did about it, and the results, period. So know who you're talking about to and what's important to them. So for the CFO, they want to talk about money and the impacts to money. Did you save customers? If you are if you're over a call center and your call center solved 100 problems for a customers that month, how much money is that worth? Okay, 100 customers times whatever that value of a customer times a month. Yep. Our call center produced $400,000 in saved revenue this month through customer resolution alone. Okay, that's the way you need to talk to a CFO. If you're talking to a CEO, they like reputation. They like the visibility. They want the swagger points. They want the ops impact as well. So the CEOs are more inclined, in my experience, to be drawn by the story and then the impact. But they don't want the whole backstory. They want just get to the point. So know your audience when you're talking internally. And then I want to encourage you to use every opportunity. If you're at a manager's meeting once a month and they do that roundtable thing, which every place I've ever worked does, you should be sharing your impact and your plans, the story of what you're doing on every single time. Don't just say, I don't have anything to share. Nope. My call center contributed $400,000 in saved revenue this month by resolving 100 client issue points. We further did blah, 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 whatever. Share those results every opportunity you get. Not in a boastful, I'm full of it kind of manner. Don't do it that way. Don't be a know-it-all or whatever, but 
you have to tell the story. Don't let others create the story about what marketing does in this organization. And marketing is so different in every business, in every organization. You show them how powerful and valuable marketing is to the organization. And again, know your audience, be quick and succinct, confidently tell how you move the needle. Doesn't have to be a long diatribe every time. Just be, we're really excited. We're running this campaign and we've already seen this kind of results and it's going to run for two more weeks. Are there any questions, you know, and people may have questions, which is exciting because that means they're listening and engaging in the work that you're doing. So I promised that we would talk a teeny bit about dashboards here. So reporting needs to resonate. Like we said, know your audience. What is important to report on? This is a sample. This one and the next one are samples that I built in Excel or Numbers. If you're a Mac user, um, these templates are available. If it's something you want, put, put your note in the chat and I'll make sure that I get it to you. Um, but, you know, for us in this particular simple dashboard that we built, we were trying to demonstrate that the pay-per-click and the organic work had impact. So in this case, you know, we're, we're including the referral sources, where it came from, how long they're staying on the website. We're looking at how much new traffic came in, what percentage came from organic social posts. This is important. If you're working on social media and it's taking X amount of your time, you should be able to measure that some of the traffic that came through or converted came from social media. It's the same with anything, email, blogs, newsletters, whatever. You have to be able to track where is that coming from. So, you know, here we saw that total visitors was 7,700. The ones that came from paid of that were 1,480. So this calculation isn't correct. It should be 1,000 divided by 7,700, which would have been the percent that came from paid. There, we're trying to get at, is this paid Google ad even worth it? So that's the kind of thing. Um, again, your dashboard should be set up based on the goals. If we know that your goal is to bring in numbers of people, traffic, they don't care about. They wanna know about conversions, sales, appointments, whatever. So make sure that you are delivering the data that makes sense. Um, I'll show you this other example. This was for one of a healthcare client as well. Again, this is a very small unit, so like maybe eight beds or something. So don't judge based on the numbers, but we were demonstrating on this specific, specific thing, the marketing activity started November 1, and you can see that December and January, there was a growth in census. They had new patients as a result. You see that the click, that the people coming to the website increased as well. You know, some of these others, the, the clicks and the time on page and all that, this stuff is all screwed up now with cookie lists and with the Apple opt-outs and with the changes to Google and all of that. So some of it is harder to really say this equal this. But when you can show that directionally more people are on the website starting, you know, shortly after we started the ads, and directionally these levels of census changed, then you can say, look it, we're driving more census into this important rehab unit. These are some other suggested data points and things that you might wanna look at. And again, I wanna emphasize the goal on your dashboard needs to be, how are you moving the needle for the organization? There are lots of amazing dashboard tools that are really expensive and they're amazing. This one is just made in Excel and numbers, so it's simple to populate. If you feel like um, if you feel like you want to, you know, you want this again, send an email or put your name in the chat and we will get it to you. So again, on the dashboards, don't layer tons and tons and tons of things on there that are just cool to look at. 
make sure it's meeting the goal. What is the point here? The point is to demonstrate our marketing activities are resulting in clients. So therefore, clients is the most important thing we're putting right up front on here. And we're showing the changes on some of the marketing efforts as well. If it's if you're needing to look at retention, then you would be measuring, oh, this many customers were dropping per month before. Maybe we'll drop, we'll track loss per month, saved revenue per month, you know, service issues resolved per month. Maybe we'll do some of those and we'll be able to really identify the things that meaningfully are changing along the organization. So the I want to just put in a little plug here. I'm winding up here. Content marketing is not a big focus of this webinar. We have others that have been recorded already on content that moves people. If you want that, you can go to our website and find it. Um, but content marketing is really important. As we look at the overall malaise, if you will, of consumers, they're inundated, they're burned out, they're disinterested, they don't trust. We have a trust crisis in America. I think that it's really important to ensure, regardless of how good your marketing is, if your content marketing and the messaging that you're using isn't dialed in, then it will, won't be as effective as it should be. And this is something we are constantly working on with my own agencies, but on behalf of our clients as well. We're watching all the triggers, the kind of norms, the industry, the surveys, the changes, and we're A-B testing content to make sure that the storytelling and trying to capture that one-on-one -on -one conversation feel in our content is really important to drive impact. Remember back to the beginning where we said a lot of the decision makers in businesses are gonna be between 25 and 44? Well now, those people are looking for relationship and they're looking for more personalized approaches. And I think in general, the consumers are looking for a good story. They want to be brought in. They want to understand how what you have to offer matters to them. And so don't ever skip over good content and assume that you can just put out marketing stuff that AI can just create this for me and we'll be just fine. Nope. You still have to be able to engage the consumer in a way that is meaningful for them. So this quote from Seth Godin, marketing is a contest for people's attention. And in the crowded marketplace, fitting in is a failure. Not standing out is the same as being invisible. And I believe that this is true inside and outside of the organization, that you need to be able to stand out and show the value of your organization to the consumer, but also your organization to the business. So this is just a little about us. Clarity, we are, Clarity PX is our healthcare organization. Boss Lady Consulting supports purposeful businesses. And, you know, we really believe that humans are the most important, that health and well-being is important priority, and that honesty is non-negotiable. It's how we work in our business. But I want to show you something really exciting. I want to tell you about a leadership cafe. This is a brand new thing. It's just launching in December. You're the first to get to know about it. We have created a virtual community that's been brewed just for you. And we have a rural health and marketing one specific, a healthcare specific one, and a non-healthcare specific one where we are creating online community, networking. We'll have monthly live trainings. We have a full library of resources and templates and things for you from our whole career, but our network and things that we're learning and have access to. We will have community discussion pages so that you can swap stories or ask questions. Has anybody done this? Do you have a template for this? Whatever. We And then there are options if you want to for one-on-ones or ask me anything sessions. 
And so these are the QR codes. If you want to check them out, we would love to have you check them out and see the entry point is like $2.97 a year. For all of this, you will have access for all the community, for brainstorming, networking, for education, for resources, and a safe place to come and say, oh, I'm dealing with this in my role. Where can I get help? How can you offer help for that? So we would love to have you join us there in the Leadership Cafe. And thank you for joining us. If there are any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. If not, um, we the link will be sent out to you and you will be able to replay this if you want afterwards. And we thank you so much for being here with us. December, our free webinar is about managing projects. So if you want to go to either one of these websites, claritypx.com or bossladyconsult.com, we've got a webinar page there. You can sign up and we would love to have you. We'll share all our tips and tools from years and years in the field. We have planning checklists as well. And we wish you much luck. We admire you and see you. We see you doing all the hard work and hope that this was meaningful. Thanks for joining us today.